Our first caller is Anna from Maryland. Hey, Anna, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, well, first off, I just wanted to say, as everyone says, um, you guys do great work. Um, thank you for uh, you know putting this podcast out. So, yeah, just want to start with that. Um, I have a question about um, one of my clients. So I am a trainer. Actually, um, uh, this month marks my one year. So I'm a newer trainer. And I um, have a client that I've been working with since the end of May that um, is a bariatric patient. So about um, a little over a year ago, she got the surgery. Um, I had put her on a strength focused, um, pretty like linear progression, anabolic esque type um, workout program. And she was doing really well. Um, her strength is doing well, like she's going up uh, in weight and getting stronger every session. But we did her body fat ooh, about um, the beginning of August, and she actually had went up body fat. So my question is, how do you increase a bariatric patient's metabolism? Um, I think I also put in my question, like, would things like aminos and other supplements in her case be more important? Um, so if you could just speak on that. Yeah, really, really good question. So uh, first thing I want to ask you though is how did you do the body fat test? Because you said she got stronger, but her body fat percentage went up. And I know body fat percentage tests can are notoriously challenging to do when people have a lot of body fat. The, the, the larger they are and the leaner they are, so when you get on the extreme ends, the more inaccurate they are and the harder they are to track. Yeah, so. but don't you think that's, I mean, that's almost obvious that's what's going to happen. If she had the surgery in the mm -hmm. last year or even two years, she's losing weight like crazy because her calorie intakes, she's losing just total weight well, too I, fast. Maybe. So I don't think it would but be. But she got stronger. That's why I wanted to ask, like, how did you do the body fat test the first the first time and then, and then each subsequent time? Yeah. So, um, I do work at a studio. I moved from a big box gym that did like in bodies with, um, bioelectrical impedance to somewhere that does skin calipers. So I was curious about getting her on, um, like an in body machine, but we did calipers. So. Okay. And you did yeah. calipers the whole time. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how much did her body fat percentage go up? Uh, by like 4%. Okay. So that's within the, the realm of error. But again, what Adam's saying could be true. I mean, losing that much weight, the only thing is that her strength went up. And honestly, when you're dealing with that much weight loss, that's really the main thing that I'm looking at is, are you getting stronger? As far as the supplements are concerned, of course, you want to work with her doctor because they do have pretty specific nu nu nutritional requirements. She's probably already on multivitamins and other supplements. But can amino acids and protein powders help this person? In my experience, yes, very much so. Easily digestible protein. That's easy to consume and convenient, can, can help when somebody's stomach is so small or they can't consume as much at one sitting. Digestive enzymes can help, so can amino acids, but I would work with the doctor to make sure that this is all uh, okay. How many calories is she currently on right now and how long ago was the surgery? So I have her tracking, but she's not very good at keeping it. Uh, she seems to be around 1,200, sometimes can get to like 1,250. And then, um, it's a pretty low. And how but I, how long how long of. how long has she been on the, uh, from the surgery? Uh, away from the surgery, removed from it. Yeah. How long ago was the surgery? A little over a year. Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, I, th that's mm -hmm. Sal. If someone goes down, if someone was eating three thousand plus calories a day, they do the surgery. They're eating twelve hundred. You can get stronger, especially since you've been training with them. It's very normal for her to get stronger. But she's losing weight at such a rapid rate that the ratio of muscle to uh, fat is higher. So that's what makes the body fat percentage go up, which is extremely uh, common with this situation. So that's yeah. not. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried about that. That's how I'd explain that to her is that, listen, we have dramatically cut your calories. And even though we're, we are building some muscle and we are heading in the right direction, you're losing so fast that it's very normal for you to also lose muscle because we're not no, we're no longer feeding it uh, enough calories to sustain it on your body. So that's all normal. Yeah, I, I would be entirely focused on performance. I, I've worked with a few bariatric patients and – I mean, essentially that surgery forces you to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to supplements, I always would work with the doctor because you're not dealing with a normal digestive system anymore. So there are special requirements, but I would focus entirely on performance, make the whole thing about performance. I wouldn't look at the scale. I wouldn't work. First off, she's going to look at the scale anyway. She's probably already getting tracked by the doctor. 
She's very aware of how much weight she's losing or not losing because that's why she did the procedure. I would focus entirely on performance, stamina, strength, mobility, and endurance, and move in that direction because in my experience, it's already so body focused yeah. that if I keep placing focus on body, it can oftentimes make it a very stressful situation. And, and when you're dealing with somebody who medi medicated themselves with food for so long, what you don't want to do is make an experience uh, something that may not be as enjoyable. And I found that just focusing entirely on performance tends to do a better job uh, with these with this particular population of people. I mean, I, w I would also, I wouldn't, I would personally, whether that's, you, you don't need to probably involve her as much, I guess, but I would definitely make an effort to keep her protein intake because she's going to be so low calorie that making sure she's on a higher protein diet will be muscle sparing for her. Even though to Sal's point, that shouldn't be the focus. We we don't need to worry too much about that. The It's inevitable that if you reduce your calories at that rate from the size that she probably was at before, we're going to lose muscle too. But to, to minimize how much muscle we lose, I would, I'd be focused for you as a coach at keeping her protein intake, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, you, you could tie that to performance, right? Mm -hmm. So rather than saying eat more protein so you don't lose muscle or so you get right. leaner. So be stronger. Exactly. We yeah. want to look at strength. We want to see how strong you can get. I want to see your performance. And I think we need to increase your protein intake in order to do that. And then shakes can be very valuable for people in this particular situation. Because of the procedure that they had, it's harder to digest food. They don't have as much capability to have as much food at one time. And liquid shakes can also oftentimes be something that uh, that helps quite a bit. And here's what's happening is you, you were, we're so low calorie that fat and muscle is just coming off the body at such a, a fast rate. At what point that will start to, especially if you're strength training, if you're strength training or you're getting adequate protein, at one point, the, the probably the fat loss will continue and then she'll start to kind of hold uh, her, her muscle mass. And that, and really that's kind of, uh, your indicator of like, you guys are really on the right path is that, yeah. you know, she started to level off on, mm -hmm. uh, on the body fat percentage, but well, I she would, has. Oh, she that's, has. She has. The, the, okay. Well, and that's to update since, uh, I wrote in the question for, um, a little under a month now, she's been at the same weight. Like oh. she comes in, she's like, "That's great." It has not budged. This is so funny. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful that like the next time we do the body fat percentage, there might be a change in that composition. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. And again, it's a different client I've ever worked with. Um, I told her to try to up her cal. See, I, I wasn't sure about upping it with protein or carbs because I know protein's very satiating, and for her. It's really hard. Um, she's already had, I think it's called dumping syndrome, mm -hmm. um, which uh, bariatric patients can get. Um, and it's just, they get really full and they feel sick kind of thing. So I actually told her about like 200 calorie surplus with carbs. You're saying protein instead, most likely. Yeah. Or, yeah proteins, okay. fats. I mean, you, you know, you want to get that, but I mean, if she feels better with some carbs, that's fine. Small meals throughout the day. This is where the benefit of that is. You know, someone like this would be doing like seven or eight, you know, snacks throughout the day because eating too much at once can cause problems, like you said, uh, with dumping syndrome. I do want to go back to the body fat test, though, because when you're testing, especially even it's especially skim fold, when I'm doing someone who's super obese, boy, the, 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 the error that I can measure with that is tremendous. Like, like how much did she weigh the first time you tested her versus the second time you tested her? Like, wh what is her weight at now? And where was she when you first did her body fat test? Do you know? Yeah, so she came in, um, she was 186, 186, and now she is budged at 162. Okay. Well, that's not so, too that's not too heavy, but you know, so no, it's it's not as hard, but yeah. it's still interesting. I, yeah, but again, I mean, you know, I I, I never tested body fat with mm -hmm. bariatric patients. I didn't even I we was didn't even say that. We didn't yeah. even talk about that. No, that wasn't part of the conversation. I think, you know, the focus with that, they've you know, it obviously taken extreme measures to lose the weight. Uh, at this point now, as a trainer, uh, to be able to establish uh, building muscle as the the main goal and objective, and getting active, you know, recovery with that, and being able to implement these better habits uh, is uh, the utmost 
most priority. So to focus on the strength part of it and really just keep, you know, reiterating, it's going to take a while, like this extreme, um, you know, shift. Now we have to really kind of take, you know, all these steps, which is going to take a lot of time to establish, you know, a, a built repaired a metabolism to be able to kind of go forward from here. And yeah. increasing the calories through carbs and fat, I think is fine so long as she's getting at least the the bare minimum protein. So I, I would, that's the one thing. Otherwise we're going to lose, mu continue to lose muscle. If she's eating 20 grams of protein every day and uh, mm -hmm. the rest is most carbs and fat to get to her 1200 or so calories. Then, uh, you know, you can do all the strength training in the world, uh, you know, in a caloric deficit and grossly under consuming protein, we're going to lose yeah, muscles. Minim so. Minimum, we want to hit like 70 grams. Or yeah. Like so that, that's how I would decide on how, what those calories come from is, you know, if she's hitting a good amount of 60 to 80 grams of protein at least, okay, well, we could, you know, eat whatever feels the best for you, whether that be carbs, fat, or protein. Yeah. But if she's grossly under eating protein, 20 to 30, say even 40 grams of protein every day, then I'd be encouraging those extra calories to come from yeah. protein. Consider this, Anna. You're working with the hardest, one of the hardest uh, segments of the population in terms of getting someone to achieve permanent success with fitness and nutrition. It's one of the most challenging segments of the population. So think that way the entire time. What you don't want to do is think of goals short term, but rather how can I get this person to develop a relationship with exercise and nutrition to where they'll be able to maintain it forever. Mm -hmm. Okay. All always and forever. They've already, I mean, it's, it's, we can, we can guess that they probably had a bad relationship to food to begin with, and exercise is very closely connected to that. So measurements, body fat tests, weigh yourself, That's macros, counting calories, like that can all be a stress and make it feel negative and all that stuff. So I like to really focus on performance. Like imagine if this client really started to just love, they stopped thinking about their weight and really just love the getting faster, getting stronger, being able to do new exercises and move in different ways and enjoy that. The the often side effect of that is they eat better. They start to eat to fuel their body. They start to develop this relationship with exercise where they, I just love doing it. I just love going to the gym because I feel good and I love moving and I love doing these new exercises I couldn't do before. So that's really the direction that I would say to focus on because don't think of yourself so much as a, I'm a trainer, I need to produce produce results for this person. Think of yourself as more of a guide, and I need to lead them to a, a, a situation where this person now has achieved permanent success. I don't know if you're familiar with the the long term fail rate, even with bi, you know with bi, uh, bariatric patients, it's not very good. So that's where I would place uh, my entire focus. At least in, in, that's what I did, and I still didn't have the greatest success rate, but it was better than when you looked at the averages. Gotcha. Yeah, no, she she's starting to get there, and I um, I mean, I started working with her when she'd already dropped a lot of weight. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. After those initial months, you start losing really quickly. So she she was already um, uh, down pretty much, and she uh, the other day tried to pick up the forty five pound barbell and like curl it for like twelve. So she's getting into the oh, strength nice. part of it, and I think the strength is actually what's exciting her. So. Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Well, perfect. Well, thank you for calling in. And actually, um, you know, I wonder if this person would benefit from our intuitive nutrition guide. Do you have that? Uh, no, I do not. No. Let me send that over to you. Um, you could read through it and pull from it and it might help you communicate with this particular client uh, in, in a healthy way with nutrition. There's some, some good stuff in there. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you, Adam. Adam. I appreciate it, guys. I re do you guys remember? So I know you guys have worked with clients who've been uh, yeah, trained quite this. a few. Yeah, yeah, and I know that the the twenty four hour Santa Teresa there was it was a clinic the hospital. Right, right it was a the clinic street. there. I worked, and I remember my first time working with this population, and it's very very challenging. The, I remember the first client I had, I got them. They, they lost lots of weight, got them in shape. You know, we did the whole you know meal plan, the whole deal. Mm -hmm. Didn't see them for years. Ran into them later. And I could not believe how much of the weight they had gained back. I thought it was impossible to gain the weight back. Oh, I know. But I guess, you know, through just sheer will and just, you know, not having a great relationship with nutrition and food, they were able to do it. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I, I need a completely different approach. Oh, same thing happens, like, not addressing the root of it all. And um, it, it was so frustrating to see that. But I, again, 
it's so addictive once you start losing weight. Like that's like one of those things like to, to slow them down and to be able to kind of uh, really address it through, you know, behavior uh, and to, to change those behaviors uh, later on in my career. Like I figured, you know, how to do that and how to communicate that a lot better. But I mean, you're, you're their cheerleader in a sense too. Like you want them to lose the weight because you think the weight is really the, the biggest issue that's keeping them unhealthy. And then you, you, you know, further on realize, Oh, well, you know, this, this, you know, root of this behavior, hasn't been uh, addressed yet. And so therefore, you know, this is going to keep coming back and something that you got to keep continually dealing with. Well, and for all of the trainers that are listening to this, the, uh, and that have clients like this, it's very normal to see the body fat percentage go up like that. So that's why I was trying to stress that. Like, it really doesn't matter what they're using. I mean, did you even test body fat for clients yeah. no, like this? I know. No. Yeah. And, that, and that's part of the reason why you don't worry about that because it's, it's not good news. You get back, right. you know, you're, they're training with you three days a week. They're doing yeah. what they're supposed to strength training. They've got a good balance in their, their uh, macros. Uh, you would like to show them, Oh, look, we got, you know, you lost 30 pounds the last two weeks, but we got uh, more muscle. Like, right. The reality is their their calories are so low, and they can't absorb very. Yeah, never really going to lose muscle with it. That's yeah. right. It's they're just they're gonna they're gonna plummet. And really, the the strength training aspect of it is just to slow down uh, the atrophy of muscle during that yeah. process. That's a sad it, truth, isn't it? Yeah, because yep. it's inevitable because of how low a calorie they are. And then again, back to my point about the protein, that would be my biggest concern as far as helping slowing that process down because. If she is eating only 1,200 calories and only eating 20 to 40 grams of protein, that's going to continue for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's going to continue for quite some time before her body probably levels out or else she's going to mm -hmm. continue to see body fat go up even with the scale going down.